Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Increase Lead Conversion Without Spending an Extra Dime. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency. And we're best known for our search engine optimization success, our best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning website optimization. DealerOn was named the top-rated website provider by driving sales for 2011, and DealerOn customers were winners of the Spring 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards. And that was great because it was based on website conversion and optimization. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we are the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. Oh yeah, that's right. I said lead guarantee program. I bet you never heard anyone say that before. So, to find out more about that and us, you can always check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have such a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Jason Azell as our presenter today. Jason Azell is the president and co-founder of Datium, the largest aggregator of auto shopper behavior data in the industry. With almost 25 years experience in the automotive industry, Jason Azell first managed dealerships for over eight years before being invited to join Autotrader.com's first sales team back in 1998. And then he started one of the most unique and respected website companies in the industry. As a member of J.D. Power's Internet Roundtable, an NADA 20 Group Preferred Speaker, and a Digital Dealer Conference Speaker, Azell is well known as an expert in automotive internet for his statistical approach to analyzing user data to better understand how to sell cars on the internet. We're very pleased to have him. Now during the presentation if you have any questions please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation we'll answer those questions of general interest. And if we're unable to get to your question live don't worry we're going to respond by email later today. Also don't forget a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And if you feel like getting even more interactive with us join us as we tweet out the webinar and ask questions through Facebook. As a matter of fact we have our first Facebook question up there right now and it is how do you increase lead conversion? So if you have a secret or something that you've tried that you know have worked and would like to share it with the rest of the audience, well, we would love your feedback. Go right now over to Facebook.com slash DealerOn and get involved. And I, I hope you will get involved. And who knows? You might score you a shout out during the show. Certainly hope you, you get involved. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's learn how to increase lead conversion without spending an extra dime. Jason Azell, how are you? Doing very well, thank you. Jason, I'm so pleased you agreed to do this webinar with us. Thank you so much for being here today. And I have to say, this is a topic that definitely every dealership, every dealership needs, needs to know. So uh, I'm very excited, and I absolutely have no clue how to increase lead conversion without spending an extra dime, because I think the answer for most people is you just throw more money at it. So I'm very, very excited to hear what you have to say. So what are we going to be learning today? Well, uh, this has always been a, a very hot topic with dealers, and uh, a lot of the genesis of starting Datium was to develop a company that aggregated data from thousands of sources across the automotive web, uh, thousands of websites auto shoppers visit during their shopping process, and really look at how shoppers shop, how long they shop, how they engage with websites, the keywords they use during their shopping session to really understand where dealers have the best opportunity to get themselves in front of shoppers uh, and more importantly uh, lead submitters and buyers. So in analyzing all this data from all these sources, uh, thousands of websites, mainly dealership sites, portal sites, OEM sites, uh, research sites, we can now see the entire path of an automotive shopper and have brand new insight into their shopping habits and behaviors that we can learn from. So in looking at saving money and increasing ad uh, lead submission, which is the ultimate goal, uh, we want to look at, uh, we want to know how, sh how auto shoppers are finding you and direct your ad dollars in the most efficient ways, and that is through SEO, SEM, pay-per-click, what have you. We also want to know how auto shoppers shop, what they shop for, how they interact with your dealership website, and that leads into a discussion about effective website navigation design. 
We also want to know what advertising has the largest impact on website traffic. In other words, putting your cars on the cars.coms, the auto traders, the Ebays, where do you have the best likelihood of attracting traffic and leads to your dealership website by expanding your footprint across the automotive web? So those will be the three main topics we discuss, and obviously we'll have a nice question and answer opportunity uh, at the end of the session. You know what I love about what you're going to talk about? This isn't just pie in the sky theory or anything. Everything that you're going to talk about today is based on data, correct? Exactly right. We, we wanted there to be uh, a Nielsen rating, if you will, a non-biased, independent, third-party company that analyzes auto shopper data. Uh, we do not sell web products, so we are not partial to any certain type of uh, website or, or web tools to really understand the, uh, the, how these tools uh, engage auto shoppers, which ones are effective, which ones uh, are not, and help dealers really understand how to allocate their ad spend in the most efficient way. I love it. Let's get started. What are you going to show us first? <laughs> so, uh, to, to kind of understand where we are of what Davian does, we are a big data company. Big data is a term that's been around for several years in other industries, um, and now it's available in automotive. And what that is is the, there's an explosion of structured and unstructured data uh, about all people on the Internet. Um, and, and by being on the Internet, uh, as 87 to 90 percent of all auto shoppers are, the beautiful thing with that is they leave a huge trail of data that we can then follow behind and learn from to uh, really understand what their shopping uh, process is. So big data has been used uh, for Amazon, eBay, all these uh, websites you visit where you revisit the site, it will show you things that are of most interest to you, things you've looked at on other websites, advertisement that is specific to behavior that you've exhibited elsewhere. Uh, so big data has powered many other industries, and we have now brought that to automotive so that we can learn more about our auto shoppers than ever before. By looking at this data, we can now measure uh, web metrics, keywords, ad spend, web traffic, all these wonderful things that we were, that were a, a little elusive to measure. We now have definitive uh, data on these subjects per dealership so that we can see exactly uh, what effects uh, certain uh, items have on your, on your web traffic, lead submission, uh, ultimately conversion rates, and then we can look at uh, how to allocate your ad spend in the most, effect in the most uh, efficient way. So first we'll look at how shoppers actually find you on the web, the data behind SEO and SEM. And what's most important here is when we look at how uh, the direct entry points, entry pathways into your website, the number one pathway into your dealership website is what we call Insight Refer. What that means is they have linked into your website through a, through a page other than your home page. They either did a specific vehicle search and found a vehicle details page. They linked over from a website that promotes your service page. Uh, but they were able to enter your website uh, by means of, of some other page than your home page. Once in your website, they continued their shopping session and were able to actually have a higher page view per visitor rate if they enter the website through a back page that is more specific to uh, the search that they performed. So there's no better way than to have your site properly linked as many places as possible, have your inventory uh, indexed individually so that people can find individual vehicles within your inventory through search engine search. Um, because once they enter your website uh, through a back page, they're much more likely to continue their shopping session. The second highest entry point are people who have bookmarked your website or linked directly to your home page from a third-party site. And that would be sites that have the Visit My Website link somewhere on their website in relation to your dealership name or your dealership advertisement. Uh, they could be banners. They could be links of uh, local, local city search websites third-party portal sites, any site that allows you to put the Visit My Website link or banner link directly to your home page is your second highest source of traffic. Third is Google Organic, which represents 26% of your traffic. So you can see within the top three sources are by far the bulk of the traffic, the bulk of the traffic you get to your, to your website. 
uh, and this is quality traffic because they have bookmarked your site, they have sought you out uh, specifically by name, or your site showed up in a, in a search engine search that was uh, specific to the terms that they were looking for. Only when we get down into, you get down to Yahoo, Bing, Google AdWords, images, maps, you get into the single percentages of traffic generation. Uh, and we can see Google AdWords only represents 2.66 of total traffic. So organic is really the most important aspect of Google optimization that we need to focus on. And that's what a good web provider can do for you is understand this data, uh, look at the organic effects of your website, how the site optimizes organically. Uh, and the nice thing with Google Organic is it is free to the dealer. So finding the best ways to optimize your site organically, which is what your website provider should be doing for you and what dealer on really excels at, uh, is to, be, to have your site pop up in uh, organically just by sure nature of the content of the website. I, I got to so, tell you, Jason, these numbers that you're giving to us are just, they're throwing me for a loop. I have never would have suspected that Google AdWords was only 2.66% or that Google Maps was, was as low as a half a percent. I would have never suspected that. Likewise, I would have never suspected that pages like um, AutoTrader and Cars.com were ranked so very highly. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm shocked. I thought, I, just you're, and this is what the data shows, obviously, but this is just, I would have completely rearranged this chart if you had asked me to. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I would have too, having sold cars for years and having worked in the website world also, you know, having started Stadium, half of what I thought was true is, sometimes is. The other half is completely the opposite. Um, and so we've been very surprised to see in looking at actual auto shopper click data as opposed to aggregating data from people who publish data, we collect this data organically right from the auto shopper, right from the browser, Every millisecond that they perform a click action is how we collect this data. So there is no better source of really understanding uh, the exact shopper uh, uh, behavior uh, than tracking their actual click behavior, and that's what the data tells us. So it's very eye-opening for us, and that's why I like these webinars as an educational aspect uh, to really explain to dealers what the truth behind uh, web the shopper behavior really is. Wow. Okay. So just so we're clear. The bookmark or direct link, that's something like cars.com and autotrader.com, those kinds of pages, correct? There are several, there are several sites that make up that, uh, that, that section. A uh, direct link could be uh, any type of site that has your direct uh, URL link on it. It could be an OEM site where they allow people from the manufacturer site to link directly to your website. Um, so autotrader and cars.com and the eBay, they make up they make up a small percentage of that section, uh, but they are a part of that. Anywhere that has the ability to link directly to your website falls in that category. Okay, and then the insight referrer is more along the lines of uh, car uh, vehicle details pages that are optimized and out there in the World Wide Web. That's right. If someone were to type in uh, Volkswagen service departments in Nashville and that linked them to your service page. Uh, if they were to type in a specific vehicle search that linked them to a vehicle details page, those are insight referrers. They entered your website through a back page through a, a more specific search uh, that bypassed the home page and led them directly to a back page that was more pertinent to their search uh, criteria. Gotcha. And then Google Organic is they do a search and they wind up on the home page. Exactly right, and we'll look more closely at that specific section uh, because it's very interesting to see what those search terms actually are. Gotcha. Really fascinating stuff. I love this data stuff. Obviously, you do too. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, if, that's, if, if you like that, uh, you'll appreciate some of these other slides. We get more into detail on uh, very specific data, and some of it is, is very eye-opening. So when we look at the, the, the number 60%, what that represents is traffic directly from Google to your website. The previous slide, we looked at organic optimization. Here, we're looking at all traffic to your website from Google. Now, these are direct links. In other words, what your website provider can show you and what Google Analytics will show you 
is the site that, what, that, the, that the consumer was on directly before clicking over to your website. And it's going to appear in all of those metrics that 60 to 65 percent of all of the traffic to a dealership website comes directly from Google, which it does. However, what we want to look at is what did they use on Google? How did they get to Google in order to uh, perform a search? The keywords that include the dealership name, 67 percent. So when we look at optimizing our website or, or buying keywords or pay-per-click, uh, uh, Google AdWords, uh, that represents a very small amount of traffic. The, the, the vast majority of shoppers who get to your website from Google have typed in your dealership name or some variation thereof. And that, again, is free to the dealer. That's perfectly organic search. That's what your website should do for you. And that's how people are finding you. So we know that prior to coming to Google, they have learned about your website somewhere else and have chosen Google as a taxi to get them from that site to your site via a keyword search of your dealership name. For example, we took a specific dealership and where you see dealer in quotes would be the name of the dealership. I've anonymized that for, uh, for these purposes. But when we see no keyword used, it's 50% of your traffic. These are people who did not use the keyword but instead typed in your www.dealername.com address. That also represents 60% of all lead generation are people who typed in your web address, had it bookmarked, or in some other way uh, knew exactly the website address to type in the address bar. When we look at organic search, search engine traffic, uh, dealer name Volkswagen, we'll call it Ezel Volkswagen for lack of a better term. <laughs> uh, people who typed in Ezel Volkswagen represents 12% of the traffic. But more importantly, we want to look at lead conversion of those keywords. Dealer name Volkswagen, Ezel Volkswagen produced 8% of my total leads. Ezel Volkswagen, the word spelled out as opposed to using VW as a uh, abbreviation, represented 5% of traffic and almost 6% of leads. And then when we get into the generic terms where it says Volkswagen Nashville, Volkswagen in general, VW Nashville, you can see where those generated a very small amount of traffic, 1.8%, 1.6%, but they produce zero leads. So when we look at, uh, when you're looking at SEO and you are looking to uh, spend a large amount of money on pay-per-click or, or search engine or search engine marketing, uh, it's, it, it's important to understand that those generic terms are very high funnel and they typically produce a small amount of traffic a very small amount of leads, almost uh, not even registered. Um, so you are better looking at optimizing your site organically, uh, promoting your dealership name everywhere that you can so that people can learn about you and then use that as the key term that they find you with. So we can look further down where we see dealer name itself. Uh, if it were uh, the large group, uh, for example, uh, Group 1 or Keffer, if they don't choose to add the manufacturer name and just use the dealer name, it's a small amount of traffic, but it has a high conversion rate of 3.8%. Right. Um, and so this is very important to look at to see not only which key terms are driving traffic, but what are my highest lead generating key terms. As you know, as a marketer for many, many years, I have always known that branding, name branding is very, very important, but this this takes it to a whole nother level. I'm really surprised that something like Volkswagen, you know, Nashville, gives you absolutely no lead conversion and you know, it's, very it's, small traffic. Yeah, I'm sorry to, to keep interrupting here. It's, it's, uh, it, it surprises me also, but then when you actually do a search for Volkswagen Nashville or Volkswagen in your city, especially the larger metropolitan cities, what you're going to see is your site is going to be competing with the manufacturer site, the auto traders, the cars, the eBay's. There are so many other websites that have huge ad budgets who rely on search engine marketing and pay-per-click to drive traffic that they are harvesting the generic Volkswagen city name keywords to drive people to their own site. Um, and they spend so much money doing that, it's very hard to compete on a pay-per-click cost basis with those type of websites. So that typically tends to be a lot higher funnel. 
uh, traffic. They will end up trickling down uh, to your website. But typically, they'll go to that third-party website on a generic search. They'll find the car that they want. They'll see what dealership that car resides at. They'll then go to Google, type the dealership name in, and end up coming to the dealership website to continue their searching and lead submission. Gotcha. So it's interesting to look at less than 1% of all searches contain the word dealer, dealerships, or dealers. What? So we're... <laughs> That's something that on our side, we think that's how auto shoppers would shop, that they would be looking for Volkswagen dealers in Nashville. But in essence, in, in fact, the word dealer, dealerships, or dealers is in less than 1% of all automotive searches. And I think the reason being is people who live in those cities um, are pretty aware through traditional marketing of which Volkswagen dealers are in Nashville. In our case, there are two, and they're owned by the same company. So because of TV advertising, newspaper, all the traditional advertising that still is effective, very effective in branding, people know that it's Hallmark BMW, and they typically, unless they're newcomers to the city uh, or visiting a city, they don't look, look for dealer, dealership, or dealers in their keyword searches. In contrast to that, 7% of all keyword searches contain the word price. 7% seems like a very small number. However, any time a shopper adds the word price to their keyword search, those shoppers are six times more likely to submit a lead, and they do so in about half the time. So whereas you're wanting to optimize yourself under new Volkswagens Nashville, that's a highly competitive keyword. It's going to be very expensive. But once the consumer types in new Volkswagen price Nashville, that only represents a small amount of keyword searches, but they are serious shoppers because they submit leads at about six times the average rate in about half the amount of time. So this is a great way to optimize your site organically by using keyword saturation on your website and using the word price in the text of your website as many times as possible to attract consumers who are shopping price. And that is a free way to get your site uh, not necessarily on uh, on the top 20 most used keywords, but optimized on keywords that have a high lead generation that might have a low traffic generation. Okay, and just to put this into perspective, because I don't I don't believe that you said it earlier, but how many this data was collected over how many dealerships? Uh, there's over 8,000 dealerships in our network, and that's uh, almost half of all new car dealers. And they range from small, medium to large, all brands, uh, all across the country. Um, and so this is a, a huge cross-section, the largest cross-section of automotive data that there is uh, by collecting data from uh, over 8,000 dealership websites. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So we're not talking about some small piece of de you know data of like you know 300 dealerships. We're talking a lot of dealerships. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's a very good point because a lot of the data you'll see was representative of a small uh, cross section of data. Perhaps, uh, excuse me here while I cancel out. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> represented a, a small cross-section of dealers. Uh, perhaps they were dealers in a certain market area. This is representative of thousands of dealers, uh, and it takes into account all sizes, all manufacturers, and all locations across the United States. One other thing to point out uh, before we move to the next section is uh, trends in auto shopper behavior. Uh, last March, last April 2011, if you had asked me how important having a mobile site is, I would tell you that it, it, is an, it, is, it is an important aspect of your branding, uh, but there's no better source of leads than your actual uh, mainstream website uh, that, that you advertise uh, locally and in, in, in all your print ad. Back in March and April, total lead submission from mobile devices was less than 3%. However, since April of last year until current, there has been an explosion of mobile device usage and more so mobile device lead submission. So that now, today, over 10% of all automotive leads are generated from some sort of mobile device. 10% is a very large number and that warrants very close attention to having a strong mobile presence. Wow, 10%? It jumped that much in 
In six months' time? In about six or eight months, it had a, just an explosive increase uh, in shopper behavior as well as lead submission. Uh, a lot of that has to do with iPad, the Androids, the, the iPhones. Uh, you can um, uh, auto-populate uh, form submissions. So if you want to submit a form from your mobile device, you can auto-fill those areas. Uh, so a lot of advancements in mobile platform, mobile browsing technology has made it easier to submit leads on mobile devices. And yes, the explosion was, uh, was well beyond what I had ever anticipated uh, in a very odd time. iPads, iPhones, they've been around for a long time. But only since April of last year did we see this just almost direct incline in uh, lead submission. Okay, now I have always known, and I think we all know, that uh, you know, mobile is definitely, definitely hot, and we all have to be able to use mobile to our best advantage. I want everyone out there right now to know that we realize that mobile is super important. And we actually have an upcoming webinar on July 12th. You may want to put that down in your calendar. July 12th, we're going to have a webinar just on mobile strategies. So that might be something you might be interested in. It's not posted yet, so I'm giving you the inside tip. But that's going to let us know how we can really take full advantage of this mobile phenomenon that's just incredible. 10%, that's a lot. And do you have any reason to believe that, Jason, that that won't go up even higher? There, there's every reason to believe it will continue to increase. If you look at um, outside of automotive, uh, laptop sales for the first time in uh, a decade or more have actually decreased, uh, whereas tablet uh, sales continue to increase. Uh, so when we look at what, what types of uh, web devices people are purchasing, the iPads and, and uh, tablet uh, devices are slowly replacing laptops uh, such that laptop sales have actually declined for the first time in over 10 years. Wow. So I, I, I see this as a continued uh, increase uh, in, in popularity. Um, it, they're much easier to access than a laptop. There's no uh, waiting period to have your laptop boot up. Uh, they're obviously far less bulky. Um, and people are look, watching TV at home in the evening while having their tablet in their hand. And when they see your advertisement on TV, they can immediately log on to your website through a mobile device or a tablet device, whereas pulling out your laptop, waiting for it to boot up, uh, was often a little bit more cumbersome. So there's a direct link with uh, tablet usage and uh, TV viewership. Um, and so that's a, a great way that people can find you very quickly when they do see a traditional advertising. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So one of my favorite subjects and one that I think is, is extremely revealing is website design, the key to higher lead conversion. Um, and at this point, we wanted to add, kind of poll the audience, uh, if, we, if we can, to see what do you think today the average lead conversion rate from a dealership website is. That's a great that question. Means, <laughs> yeah. And, and what we're looking at is LTV, lead to visitor ratio. is the common metric that's used all across the industry. Of all the visitors that come to a dealership website, how many people actually submit a lead? And uh, she'll, we'll get some help here on a multiple choice question. Ah, oh, that would be great. Okay, so everyone out there in webinar land, if you could, please look at your screen and you'll see the question posted there. What do you think the average lead conversion, the LTV, is on a dealership website, an average dealership website? Please select one of the following answers. Higher than 5%, 4% to 5%, 3% to 4%, or you think it's less than 2%. Pick just one of those answers and let us know. Your participation is always greatly appreciated. And we're getting a lot of votes in right now. Thank you so much for voting. All right. Oh, my gosh. Almost everyone's voted now. Whoever hasn't voted, keep voting. <laughs> and then um, i, I got to say, Jason, I really don't know the answer to this. It's, I mean... Conversion, you're talking about, like, let's say, out of 100 people, how many people actually send in the lead, right? That's correct. That's okay. Correct. Okay. So, well, we have a great majority of the people on the webinar have voted. Thank you so much for your answers. We're going to close this poll right now. We're going to share the results. This is what the audience thought. 16% of you think that it's higher than 5%. 
a mere 12% of you out there today think it's 4 to 5%. And we're evenly split on 36% of people thinking it's 3% to 4%, and 36% of people say that it's less than 2%. Now, I find that the disparity in the answers very, very interesting. But what I will probably find even more interesting is the actual answer to the question. So Jason, why don't you tell us, what is the answer to the question? Sure. Uh, and I'm actually very, very uh, glad to see that most people uh, were leaning in the right direction. The average lead to visitor ratio of all the dealerships we monitor is 1.68%. Uh, and that's well down from almost 4% five years ago. Um, wow. Now, it's interesting to note here that within those 8,000 websites, we take into account a lot of very small dealerships, a lot of very large dealerships. Um, and so this 1.68 is representative of a huge cross-section of dealers. The answers we received on the poll could be very pertinent to their own websites based on their size and their market area. But when we look at a national average, 1.68, that takes into account all dealerships, all sizes, all demographics. We have some websites in very rural areas that might only have 1,000 visitors a month, whereas the average visitorship is about 4,000 a month. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is we calculate lead to visitor ratio a very specific way, and that is email submissions from the website that are vehicle specific, meaning the email lead had to be submitted on a specific car or in some way refer to a specific uh, vehicle question in a sales, uh, in a sales uh, opportunity. So it didn't so have anything to do with service or parts or anything like that? That's right. And that's one thing to keep in mind is how is your lead conversion being calculated? Does it include service and parts leads opportunities? Does it include uh, all form submissions from your website? That number will obviously be a lot higher. What we look at is actual vehicle sales opportunities driven from the website via lead submission uh, at 1.68%. That's the number we want to focus on raising, and be, as those are our, our new vehicle opportunity or new and used vehicle sales opportunities. No, but Jason, so, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Jason, I, I appreciate all the disclaimers, but 1.6%, that seems really low. It is. It is. Now, what's interesting, again, is uh, that national averages are very hard to use for benchmarking our own success. Uh, some dealers obviously do a lot better. We have dealers uh, in this same average that might have a 0.4% lead conversion. We also have some dealerships that are actually in double digits of lead conversion. So the national average is so hard to use as a measurement or a benchmark because the, disparities, the, the, the differences in the top of the spectrum and the bottom of the spectrum. So I want to show a little bit more detail on how that number comes about and how to increase that number uh, by looking at what numbers are representative in that ratio. So when we look at 63%, that is the average bounce rate from a dealership homepage. So of all dealership websites in our network, of all the visitors that come to those dealership websites, on average, over 60% will leave the website before they ever get past the home page. Now, that's pretty typical of most websites in the web in, in general, whether they're automotive or not. Bounce rates tend to be somewhere around 50 or 60%. Uh, so home page navigation and structure is extremely important and decreases this number, and we'll look at that more closely in a second also. The difference being, as we saw earlier, Insight Refer being a high source of traffic, the bounce rate from a search results page or a vehicle details page is half that of the home page. So once we get consumers in front of vehicles quickly and easily, the bounce rate is, is far less than if they come to our home page. So oftentimes, if the home page is not conducive for automotive shopping, meaning if it's not conducive for quickly finding a vehicle in stock, we'll lose half of our opportunities or half of our traffic that came there looking for a vehicle. Whereas if we can engage them in vehicle search quickly and easily, that bounce rate cuts down to almost half. Wow. So when we look at controlled experiments, we do click mapping, which is very eye-opening <clears throat> to look at a dealership website from an auto shopper's perspective. 
so often as dealers we look at a website on based on how we want it to look uh, as web developers we we base it on uh, we want to build a site that the dealer principal or the dealer managers are happy with and I think sometimes we lose sight of the fact that the site is built for one person and that is the average Joe shopping for a vehicle so in looking at this particular website we did a, a analysis the general manager felt like this space on the right hand side uh, was very bland uh, it did not do anything aesthetically uh, for the website and wanted to remove this section of the website and make other use of that real estate when we actually did a click map we realized this section the right hand drop down uh, vehicle search it's been around for years is still the most effective form of navigation to get shoppers in front of vehicle inventory so not only did we not want to get rid of it it was the most engaged part of the home page uh, whereas at the top navigation we can see used car is by far the most popular uh, button click Hi. specials is the second most popular page of a dealership website so specials is a great way to increase lead submission and generate uh, sales opportunities the unfortunate side of that is almost 70 percent of dealership websites have no specials posted at any given time when you research those websites 70 percent 70 percent when you look at when we scan those pages those websites for specials on the specials page uh, right around a little under 70 percent of those sites came back with no data found and there were no specials on the specials page that's your second highest click page of any dealership website is the specials page. But consumers love specials. <laughs> I love a good special. That's right. That's it. It's in human nature. We want to know what's on sale. We want to know what we can get a deal on. Um, and so anything the word special is a driving uh, is a driving term. That is that in, in implies that there is something special. There is a value. There is a discount. Uh, there is a good deal waiting for us behind this button, uh, and when they get there and find nothing, the bailout rate is extremely high. Oh yeah, uh, I so won't look at the regularly priced stuff until I've looked at the the stuff that's on sale or on special. Of course, that's exactly right. As we do with any other type of electronics, uh, home goods, uh, uh, apparel, clothing, it's the same scenario. We always look for what's on sale to see if what we like or what we want happens to be on sale that week uh, that's the second highest click page so when we looked at this website and evaluated our recommendation back to the dealer was some minor changes would help increase the effectiveness of this home page dramatically you can see not a huge change we took the most valuable real estate and that's the drop-down vehicle search moved it to the left hand side because all computer engagement for consumers is based on left-hand navigation so when we look at windows when we look at email when we look at other websites um, all computer activities are left-hand justified so our main navigation elements should follow that same rule and be on the left-hand side of the page from just doing this one move we actually increased home page engagement by 17 percent which means wow. we decreased the home page bailout rate by 17% by making this one change of not only leaving this portion but moving it to the left hand side had a dramatic increase uh, actually a dramatic decrease in the home page bailout which increased the, the engagement of the website Wow 17% that's huge um, Jason I apologize did you say this on the last slide but what was the um what was the conversion rate on the slide before? You know, the yeah, this. Yeah, so the overall conversion rate of this website was in that same realm, right around uh, just under 2%. Gotcha. So we were able to take that to just above 2%. But again, it's hard to manage your website by looking at lead to visitor ratio by itself. It's such a small number that it's hard to just focus on moving lead to visitor we have to break that down and see where are the fail points within that formula and the first metric is looking at how many people are actually getting past our home page and let's focus on that portion right once they get past the home page how many people are actually engaging in a vehicle search that's a second metric 
So instead of focusing on lead to visitor ratio, that one number being so small, let's look at the other aspects of the shopping session on the website and try to and attack those first. The ultimate goal is that you'll increase that lead to visitor ratio number if you focus on the other aspects. Gotcha. Uh, and so in looking at a, a, an effective web, you know, this uh, website, uh, we did help increase uh, to some uh, the, the click-through rate uh, by a, pretty, a, a decent amount. Uh, obviously, several of the things we do, homepage specials you can see are highly clicked on. Again, for an auto shopper, 74% of all shoppers coming to a dealership website are there to do one thing, and that is find a specific car that they have an interest in. So we have to we have to build the home page uh, to be conducive for that vast majority of shoppers, and that is make it very uh, vehicle centric. As many ways as we can get them into inventory, as many ways as we can advertise vehicles, uh, tends to build a site that has a much higher conversion. So we'll go from one extreme to the other. This is what I consider uh, an ideal site, and I put that in quotes because this is a Nissan store uh, named Ideal Nissan. Uh, this adheres to all the rules that we see on sites that have a high lead to visitor ratio and high consumer engagement. This site in our network produces a double digit lead to visitor ratio, and that is calculated the same way we calculate all other websites, regardless of the website provider, regardless of the size of dealership, we calculate lead to visitor the same way across the board so that we have a standardized measuring stick by which we can evaluate all websites. So it is no myth, it is no uh, toying of the numbers to say that this site is, when, is the highest performing website in our network uh, at over double digit percentage of lead to visitor ratio. But when you start looking at the website, you'll realize the entire site is built around vehicle search and lead submission. So we have every vehicle that Nissan builds right here on the home page. If this were a live website, all I have to do is roll over Altima, and at that point there's a pop-up window that comes up that allows me to search new, search used, or submit an inquiry. So right from the home page, within one click, I can be looking at new Altimas in stock or pre-owned Altimas in stock, or I can submit a lead on an Altima within one click right off the home page. Notice here, just like the other website, although they were completely separate, completely different providers, they had no uh, correlation to each other, but we still have our standard drop-down menu search on the top left uh, area. And again, probably the highest engagement uh, section of the website is, is those drop-down menus. On the previous site where we saw the large banner that said Price Fighters, it was not clickable. There was no call to action. It did not lead to any part of the website. This banner rotates out uh, to uh, advertise different models within the Nissan lineup, and each banner is clickable. So as this banner comes up, as shown in the 2012 Nissan Murano, if I click on this banner, I'm immediately looking at 2012 Nissan Murano's in stock, available for sale, by color, transmission, engine type, trim, whatever. So here's our standard navigation. Here's vehicle search navigation. Here's banner navigation. Uh, here are specific vehicle search criteria. So here's pre-owned specials. We have one, two, three, four, five ways uh, and actually six, if I want to research these direct links, six forms of navigation on the home page to find a specific vehicle within a very small amount of clicks. This helps us engage the consumer quickly, easily, painlessly, and has a dramatic effect on lead to visitor ratio. We can see quick navigation, uh, get pre-approved, vehicle quick code, quote, this is also very statistically driven in that we know these are the major functions of auto shoppers that come to this website other than just vehicle search. They want to research a vehicle. They want to see about getting pre-approved. They want a quick quote on a certain vehicle. So we know statistically that these are the most likely uh, reasons a shopper would come to this website. Therefore, the quick navigation, uh, these deeply, these quick links into the website are built very specifically around consumer behavior statistics. 
So this site is probably, in my opinion, uh, the, the, the ideal structure for a dealership website from the perspective of an auto shopper, which is who we should be catering to anyway. So th that website is, is lovely. I mean, it looks pretty, but the other website didn't look that bad either, I didn't think. I mean, it wasn't a terribly ugly website. Yeah, that one. So I'm surprised that the difference in the LTV is, is five times or more as much just by right. making some very simple, easy-to-make changes, uh, rearranging some stuff, and, and centralizing the focus of the home page on on functionality and search to get them to the inventory to get them to find a vehicle. That's exactly right. And if you notice, the, the, the uh, statistics are, are correlate pretty nicely in that this website, aesthetically, not bad, very pleasing. Um, however, this is a, a huge piece of wasted real estate here, the prize fighters. That is what the dealer wants to be known for, but it doesn't prompt any sort of click ability or or direct contact or lead submission, but much less does it involve them in inventory. So whereas this website has basically two entry points into inventory search, the second website has almost six. Right. That's almost the exact relation uh, or, or correlation in lead to visitor ratio is this site has about five times the uh, convert lead conversion because it has about five different five more ways to search inventory. Hmm. So, very specific correlation in vehicle search ability and lead and homepage bailout rate being low and lead submission being high. I think everyone right now is looking at their own website saying, "What am I doing? <laughs> what do I have? Okay, what else do we have?" Yep, as well they should. That's a great way to analyze your own website. Is uh, do it, look at it from a auto shopper's perspective. How fast can you find a used 2007? Nissan Altima. Give yourself specific vehicle tasks and see how easy your website is to find those specific vehicles. So when we look at before and after analysis or advertising analysis, uh, here we see uh, an analytics tool that we provide. That the blue line shows average visitors on a daily basis to your website. What you won't see from other uh, analytics uh, uh, devices that you really have to have is some point of comparison, some point of benchmarking your success. So here we see the red line gives us the average visitors in your market area based on the other dealerships that we track in that area. It's completely anonymous. It doesn't matter who those dealerships are, but you want to know, am I outperforming or underperforming the other dealerships in my area? In this case, this dealer consistently outperforms in total visitors against the DMA the yellow line is the average visitors in the nation, which is always going to be the smallest number because it takes into account the most dealerships. But what we can look at this and determine is uh, when leads go down, or certainly when traffic goes down on my website, is that indicative of something that happened in my market? And in this case, it is. So it doesn't mean that there was a failure or a, a problem with the website or something that you did that you did wrong. This was in in your market. Average visitors to viewership websites overall went down, and you suffered from that same phenomenon. Here, you had an, incre in, an increase in visitors to your website. There was also a slight increase in visitors overall in your market area. What we want to look at is the differences. Here, you had a large spike in visitors, whereas in your market, there was actually a slight downturn in visitors. So whatever marketing or whatever advertising direct email campaign, whatever you did here and here had a dramatic effect in driving traffic to your website that was not indicative of what was going on in your marketplace. So these were very effective forms of advertising. Whatever occurred here uh, were very effective in driving traffic to your website that other dealers in your area did not realize. We look at lead submission the same way. Uh, where did we get, what prompted people to submit more leads? Was it certain vehicles on special? Was it a certain sales event? Here we can see the same thing uh, when we look at automotive leads. A huge spike in lead submission here where it was flat in your market. Uh, there was a decrease here that was also realized in your market. So you want to determine what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong, and how does that compare to what's going on in my market so I know how to compare and do continue to do more of the right thing 
and less of the wrong thing when it comes to generating leads and traffic. Right. So on the last section, we look at shopper behavior. Having the right vehicle in the right place at the right time obviously is the key to success when it comes to sales and lead generation. So we can look at above the black line is really all a dealership is able to see. You have three leads all on Ford F-150s. Now the technology is available where we can see how does lead A, B, and C differ from each other? Are they all the same? In this case, all leads are not created equal. So lead A, although it came in on an F-150, we know that they've looked at minivans, they've looked at SUVs, crossovers. The most uh, used search term was best family vehicles. They've not visited the dealership website. So now we have a, more, a deeper profile of all leads you can submit through your website to understand more about that lead, how likely they are to buy in a short amount of time, or are they still upper funnel and very indecisive on what they're looking for. So this shopper has been in the market for two weeks, whereas lead C, although they would look the same as lead A, are very specific on F-150s. They set out looking for best used pickup trucks. Uh, they submitted other leads on F-150s, and they've been in the market for 12 weeks. So lead C is a very specific F-150 buyer whereas lead A, although they look like an F-150 buyer, uh, are pretty indecisive. I doubt that this person would close quickly, and I doubt they'll end up buying an F-150. So now that we can understand more about the history of this each individual shopper, we know when we get a lead what likelihood we have of closing that person. We know if we're being shopped against a Nissan Titan, in the case of Ford, uh, lead number B, or we know if they're Ford brand loyal and they've been in the market for a while, this is our highest prospect of these three leads. So knowing how people shop, how long they've shopped, what they're shopping for, what they're competing against, helps you as a dealer know on every lead how you approach them in the sales process. Right. Um, and I'll skip through a couple of slides here. I want to get to vehicle analysis. Because we track over 110 million automotive shoppers in our network, we're able to see on a click basis, based on their click behavior, not lead submission and not sold data, but actual click behavior is the most predictive when it comes to determining which cars are going to be hot and which cars are not. In this case, we look at Avalon and Toyota Camry. Over the course of last year, it was rather flat. It increased slightly in July, slightly in August. But from September to October, there was a dramatic increase in shopper intensity around a Toyota Camry. Ironically, this was right about the release of the new model style, which was uh, very well hyped by Toyota corporate. A lot of advertising around that new vehicle. Camry lovers were ready for a new style Camry. And so when word came out that the Camry was being redesigned, it had a dramatic effect on shopper intensity on, on Toyota Camrys. What this tells us is, and what we've seen consistently, when we see a rise in auto shopper intensity on a certain vehicle, typically that car sells a lot better in the following 45 days when we see this type of rise in auto shopper intensity. So we can now determine, based on click behavior and not what sold last month, which cars have the highest likelihood of selling in your market over the next 45 days. And as a dealer, if we knew that, we would know how to stock our lots. We would know what to advertise traditionally. We would know what to put in our specials page of the website. You want to put the right car out in the market based on consumer demand as bait to draw those people into your website, into your dealership. So every month on our website, for no charge, we post our ASI vehicle rankings. And you can download that report to see what are the hottest cars in the market, and what are the coldest cars in the market, and how can you stock your lot, new and used, around that information. So last year for 2011, we saw that BMW 328 was the winner as the most popular vehicle among automotive searches for 2011. It beat out the Ford F-150, the Nissan Altima, and the Toyota Camry, whereas we typically see those three cars, one, two, and three, the BMW 328 was the most popular vehicle uh, among auto shoppers last year. Hmm. We saw Audi, Audi A4 creep up to number five, and here's what's very interesting is our Chevy Silverado at six, Volkswagen had number six, number seven, and number eight.
whereas in previous years, the Volkswagen was non-existent anywhere in the top, top 10 or top 15 most popular vehicles. Volkswagen has done an excellent job redefining their vehicles, redesigning their vehicles, advertising their vehicles to a younger market. So that advertising has been very effective to show, to, to, to prove that they now have the seven and eight most popular vehicle in the market for 2011. Hyundai Elantra and Ford Fusion round out the top 10. So when we want to look at what cars are on the increase, what cars are on the decrease, we look at ASI gains, auto shopper intensity increase by OEM. Hyundai had the largest increase in auto shopper intensity at 42%, Kia at 37 Infiniti made a huge jump at 34%, Ford up 23%, BMW up 21%. So just by understanding vehicle trends in the industry, you can help better stock your lot uh, with the right vehicles as well as get rid of vehicles that have a, a red down arrow when it comes to auto shopper intensity. Typically, if a car starts shrinking in popularity, they're not going to make a huge comeback all, you know, all of a sudden. Those are cars you can get to the auction 45 days sooner, uh, not take a loss on, and try to get out from under cars that are going cold as opposed to waiting until they actually freeze up uh, before you have to start getting rid of those vehicles. And again, uh, some, some interesting uh, data, but <clears throat> that won't be very useful at this point. But it's often what we think would be true uh, is, in fact, in, is completely opposite. Here, stop shopper activity, we were curious, uh, over the course of those uh, last month of last year, uh, was down consistently. Uh, there were not a lot of shop, stop shoppers in the market. They were consistently some of the lowest shop vehicles. Saab never had a better shopping day than the day they filed bankruptcy. <laughs> it's amazing. The day they filed bankruptcy, Saab files bankruptcy on 12 19. You can see the increase in shopper intensity was over 160%, and the next day was even higher. On the third day, where they actually announced that they would suspend warranty coverage, was their third highest shopping day in history. And the following day was their second highest shop, uh, shopping uh, day in history. So what we thought would be true when Saab filed bankruptcy that those, those, those clients would absolutely abandon the market, it turns out that it, it did the opposite. Everybody wanted to get their hands on one of the last Saabs uh, before they became unavailable, regardless of what the warranty coverage was. As you can see, that, that shopping trend stayed pretty consistent over the next 30 or 45 days. Saabs were never hotter than the month after they filed bankruptcy. And that's exactly opposite of what we would have thought. That is insane. I would have never thought that. <laughs> now, I wouldn't recommend uh, OEMs filing bankruptcy as a uh, marketing uh, strategy. <laughs> uh, it worked very well to get rid of those last sobs that were sitting around. Uh, they became extremely hot. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, phenomenon. Uh, another interesting thing that would be opposite of what we thought uh, Volt, uh, the Chevy Volt, when the news came out about there being problems with uh, the batteries and the Chevy Volts and there could be potentially fire uh, hazards, um, you would expect that we would see people stop shopping for the Chevy Volt and start shopping for other types of hybrids when that was not the case. 62% of people who were shopping for a Chevy Volt stopped shopping Chevy Volt, but they stayed, they continued shopping for Chevrolet vehicles. So Chevy Volt shoppers are not hybrid shoppers. They are Chevy loyal shoppers that wanted to look at a Volt for a domestic hybrid uh, in place of something that they would previous that they might have been looking at elsewhere. So it wasn't that Chevy Volt shoppers were were hybrid shoppers. They were very Chevy loyal in that 62% of those shoppers continued shopping for other Chevy vehicles who had a high, uh, a high miles per gallon rating, and it was okay that they couldn't get the Volt. They would just soon also buy a Chevy. So very interesting to see how hybrid shoppers uh, fit in the, uh, in the class categories. Uh, one last subject we want to look at, and this is uh, very intriguing when we look at ad spend. Uh, what we talked about earlier, you're able to measure direct impact of traffic to your website. The last site people were on, before they linked directly to your website. 
when you look at those stats from your web provider from Google, 65% from Google, the next closest re direct referring website is being at 5%, Yahoo at 3 Facebook at 2 and on down the line. Right. Now, I'm sorry? Oh, I said right. <laughs> yeah. And so what's interesting is uh, the, the, the much bigger story of where your advertising works is when we look at indirect attribution. So we know that people go to uh, all these other sites. They go to see a TV ad. It prompts them to go to Nissan USA. They might see a banner for a certain vehicle. They go to cars.com. Once they figure out the car that they want and the dealership who had it, they then go to Google, type in the dealership name, and come to the dealership website. So you're able to measure this direct link here, but you're not able to see where they were prior to going to Google. Now that we can see that, the numbers change dramatically. 64% still come from Google, but 52% of all automotive shoppers are on Facebook at some point prior, 34% hmm. on YouTube, 25% on eBay, 16% uh, on AutoTrader, 12%. So the numbers are very dramatic when we look at the indirect link. Websites that auto shoppers go to prior to Google and prior to coming to your website, this is where your ad dollars are best spent, and every number that you see in red are places where you have the ability to put your website or your actual physical inventory. So huge opportunity here if you don't measure direct referring URLs as your only form of success and look at the indirect effect of where your ad dollars are being spent. And no better way to look at that than on a, on a dashboard like we see here. All the numbers we see at the top are traffic that is happening on your dealership website. Only now we can see where that traffic came from on an indirect basis. So we know over the last 30 days that you had 2,000 visitors to your website that originated at AutoTrader. You had 3,900 who originated at BlackBook. You had 2,300 that originated at Kelly Blue Book. And of those shoppers, you receive 28 leads through your website, 20 and 13. These would be the website, these would be leads that came through your website that looked as though they came from Google, but in fact, we know that they originated on a site where you were actually spending money or had your vehicles posted, and now we can do a much closer advertising spend analysis to see where are your ad dollars working and stop throwing 65% of your budget towards Google because the awareness of those cars you did so was created elsewhere. Gotcha. That sounds kind of important. <laughs> and the big, yeah, very much so. And the big stat there that we look at is shoppers who visit an automotive portal that actually shows physical inventory are five times more likely to submit a lead on your website sometime after visiting that website. It might be a week later or a month later, but if they've been to a portal site and seen your vehicle inventory, those leads are five times more likely, those shoppers are five times more likely to submit leads on your website. Um, so we do see a direct correlation in websites that post your inventory and traffic on your website and leads being submitted on your website uh, of people who have been to those sites prior. So interesting information. Uh, a lot of information we can glean from this. I hate to run over time, but uh, I want to be sure and try to explain a very easy, simple, uh, statistically uh, validated ways to increase traffic and lead submission without spending an extra dollar. In fact, saving a few dollars and increasing lead submission would be the ultimate goal, and now that's possible to do when we do a full analysis using the data that we have. I, I thought that was really, really fantastic information. Thank you so much, Jason. We do have a few questions. Uh, waiting for you. So if you're ready, without further ado, let's get to at least a few of them before we, we sign off. You ready? Sure. All right. So the first question comes from Stephen, and he wants to know, does the data show what the actual shopping time for the average auto shopper from, going, from first going online to purchasing a vehicle is? Yeah, you know, I get that question a lot. Um, there used to be statistics put out that says uh, uh, an average auto shopper will buy in 17.3 weeks. Uh, at 14.2 weeks, they start shopping for other competitive brands. There was this incredibly detailed timeline of how long a shopper actually shops 
what we've seen, and I guess the, the biggest realization I've had in, in uh, working with the data is there is no average shopping session. There is no norm. We see people come on the, come in the market, shop for two weeks, and buy a car immediately. We have seen shoppers in our network who continuously shop uh, for over 16 months. They are still shopping for a vehicle before they made a purchase decision. So I guess what I've learned is when you look at the bell curve uh, on shopper times, it, it's so small in the middle and the tails are so long on the end that there is no national average that you can go by. Hmm. But for example, in the southeast, auto shopping sessions are about twice as long as they are in the northeast. Uh, being from Nashville myself, you'll notice down here in the south, we don't do anything fast. Uh, we're very slow to do uh, to get from one place to the other. Uh, whereas in the Northeast, in New York, the the speed at which life happens is ex is extremely high. Uh, so it stands to reason that shoppers in the Northeast shop for about half the amount of time as shoppers in the Southeast. So I guess my answer to that question is there is no norm. People might have totaled their vehicle, and they will shop for one or two weeks and buy immediately. People might uh, start shopping for a sports car. Their wife comes in on uh, on the 14th week and says she's pregnant, and all of a sudden their shopping behavior starts uh, changes from a sports car to a minivan. <laughs> so, because life is unpredictable, car shopping behavior is just as unpredictable. Thank you for that, Steve. I hope that answers your question. We did have another question, and and certainly if anyone else has any questions, please send them, send them on in now. Candace had a question for you. She said. You said in-site referrer traffic can come from search. So how are you differentiating that from organic search? Well, the, the organic search are terms that would lead someone to your home page. The in-site referrer would also be organic, but we separate it out to show that they uh, deep link past the home page. So I guess the answer, to, to be specific, uh, organic search, in that, in that's particular statistic we looked at, organic search are search terms that revealed your home, a link to your home page, whereas Insight Referrer are also organic searches, but they led people to some other page other than your home page. And just bypass the home page entirely, like it took you to That's the vehicle right. details page, right? That's right. Gotcha. So in combine, if you combine those two numbers together, that would give you your total organic search results but we want to break it out to see how many people actually went to the home page versus how many people uh, deep linked into the website and what was the difference in their behavior if they came to the home page versus if they deep linked into the website. Candace, I hope that helps clear up any confusion. Certainly, if you have another follow-up question, write it on in. Uh, I would like to get this one last question in as quickly as possible because I know we are running a little bit over because so much great information to share. Gabe wrote in, why are there so many different conflicting stats on lead to visitor ratios? Seems like everyone has a different stat for this metric. I've noticed that too because I think, I remember I, I was at a, a meeting and they asked the audience, um, what's your closing ratio? What do you think it is? And a lot of people, I guess they just used a different formula because a lot of people thought their closing ratio was 20 or 30 percent, and it just, you know, obviously it's not. Yeah, and that, you know, that's a, that's a, what was a lot of the reason uh, that we felt like Datium was, was needed in the industry was to give some sort of uh, common metric uh, evaluation to these statistics being thrown around. And not to say that there's a wrong or right way of doing it, but we do it a certain way so that all websites are measured in the, with the same metric, and that is lead to visitor ratio is a vehicle sales specific lead submission. You will see some companies that include all lead submissions, all form submissions from the website included in lead to visitor. Um, not to say that that's not accurate, but we want to take service and parts and make them a separate category as opportunities and, and not include those in lead to visitor ratio as we calculated, but some web providers might as those are service and parts opportunities. Uh, however, an employment application or a quick contact asking what your service hours are aren't necessarily sales opportunities, but certain companies will include all leads, all form submissions uh, in their lead to visitor. Another instance that we also see is some companies will include phone calls 
into their lead to visitor ratio. We calculate lead to visitor ratio strictly on lead on email form submissions. Some companies will add in phone calls as leads into their lead to visitor ratio. We do know that phone calls from your website are about eight to one the number of emails that you'll get. So phone calls are a lot higher contact uh, way of contact from your website than email submissions. But for our purpose, we want to look at we don't know when people call in what they asked for to know that they were sales opportunities. So when we look at lead to visitor ratio as we calculate it and use it for all providers is email form submissions that are vehicle specific sales opportunities. Uh, but you will see a huge variance in how people calculate lead to visitor ratios. So uh, we want to try to bring some normalcy to that. Thank you so much for clearing that up for us. Uh, Gabe, I hope that answers your question. Now, Jason, I want to thank you so much for a very eye-opening presentation. I, you really threw me for a loop on some of the, the information that you presented. So um, we're a little bit past the top of the hour. Any questions that weren't answered during this time will be answered by email directly later today. I also want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Share it with friends and colleagues. It's okay with me. And today's webinar is also going to be posted on the DealerOn website at DealerOn.com slash webinars. To view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars, go there too. And you may not know this, but we have a great blog at DealerOn with all kinds of automotive goodies. So you can check that out at DealerOn.blog. I'm sorry, DealerOn.com slash blog. And feel free to reach out to us on any of our social media outlets. we got Facebook, Twitter, Google+, you name it, we are on it. So reach out to us. We love hearing from you. We're everywhere. Please connect with us. And Invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, How to Be Discovered by Auto Shoppers at the Zero Moment of Truth. And uh, it's a good one. I got you a good one. None other than Eli Romberg. He's a strategic partner manager on the Automotive Channel sales team at Google. And I, that leads me to the question, when was the last time you got to hear directly from someone at Google on how you should advertise on the Internet? Exactly. So I expect all of you to be there, and I expect you to tell everyone you know about this, because Eli is going to tell us how to get it done, and he would do it, or how he would do it if it were him. Now, I just don't think there's anyone better qualified to tell us how to advertise our dealerships to get the biggest bang for our buck. So this is going to be another can't miss presentation by your friends at DealerOn, and don't forget DealerOn's weekly webinars are always held every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and we have some really great webinar topics planned for this year. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, please feel free to contact me directly. My name is Eliana, and I love hearing from you. Track me down online or email me at Eliana at DealerOn.com. And we have a little survey afterwards, so if you wouldn't mind answering the questions in the survey once you leave, that would be great, too. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and we hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one, everyone. Bye.